Hi, second graders. Welcome back to another day of skills with Ms. Catrone from Citizenship Academy. Today we are on Unit 4, Lesson 11. Let's get started. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go over our goals for today. Alrighty. I think we are. There we go. All right. Sometimes this remote learning or distance learning can be hard for teachers too. All right, our goals for today says our one learning target is I can read words with the ow spelling, O-W. I can read words, read and write words with the tricky E spelling. I can ask and answer questions about key details in the story, Wall Street. Okay, three goals today. I'm super excited. Let's get started. So we have a new list of spelling words that you're going to be practicing this week. We're going to be practicing this words together. Okay, so all of our words this week have O-W in them. Now, this is a tricky thing about O-W. Sometimes it says O, sometimes it says ow. So that's the, um, the goal of our spelling list this week is to figure out which ones say O and which ones say ow. <clears throat> Alrighty. So this is like a tug of war. O-W can say O and O-W can say ow. Now, when I see O-W as it says the word O, or the sound O, I see it in the first column. I'll read these down for you. Below, yellow, elbow, rainbow, snow, sorrow, arrow. Okay? On the other side of my list, I see O-W as it says ow, like the word plow flowers, growling, powder, shower, meow, chow. And as always, our, we have our tricky word for our spelling list, and this one is your. All right, so we're going to practice those words together, um, and we're going to go over a little bit of our spelling tree. This is all of our spelling um, tree that has the sound E. As you guys know, the sound stays the same. It's all E. It can be spelled different ways. It can be spelled with E-E, E-A, -E, e and E tricky E. Okay. So um, we're going to learn today that the letter E can sometimes be used to represent the sound E. So we've learned it has its short sound E, like egg, elephant, excellent, uh, says that E sound, but we also know that E can say its own name, E. All right, let's read these um, words together. This has the short sound, the E eh sound, okay? Hen, <clears throat> as you guys remember in kindergarten and first grade, we did a lot of chaining, so I can get my arm out. And hen, that's a good strategy that we can pull out even in second grade to help us sound out words. Next one, red, red. Next one, um, this one has four sounds, so I'm gonna get out my four fingers, st, m, stem. On the other side, I have multi-syllable words. Remember I talked about how <clears throat> when we're reading these kind of words, we can chunk them up. So I see two words that I can sound out. App, hap, and pen. If I put those together, I get happen. Next one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to chunk them up into two smaller words that I know how to read. B, ed, bed, er, um, room, bedroom. That helps us take that strategy, chunking, chunky monkey is what I like to call it, um, helps us take longer words and chunk them into parts that we can read. Okay. So now we're going to talk about the tricky spelling for E. The letter E is a tricky spelling because it can represent more than one sound. Okay, so we've just practiced when it says E. Eh. Now we're gonna practice when it's being tricky and sometimes it says E. Alrighty, so here's our spelling for the E sound. It's all by itself, it's just the letter E. Um, I say this in the word me. Remember, all of our vowel cards are gonna be green because our mouth stays open and it lets the air flow through. Kind of like a green light, you're good to go. E, my teeth don't close, my lips don't close, all the air can flow through. Let's look at my power bar. Hmm. Am I gonna see this a lot or not so much? 
Not so much. The power bar is small. It's not a very common spelling for this sound E. Alrighty. So let's practice reading some words with the tricky spelling E. Okay. I'm going to start. You're going to repeat after me. Me. B. He. She. All right, so when the letter E comes at the end of a word or a syllable, it represents the E sound, so it's the last. Um, if it comes at the end, like I said, of a word or a syllable, it says the E. Those are just something we're gonna have to remember because remember, E is tricky. Let's practice reading some multi-syllable words with E. All right, ready? I'll say one, and then you're gonna repeat after me. Below. Ooh, see how I have the E sound. Before. Even. Repeat. Alrighty. Again, when the letter E comes at the end of a word or a syllable, it represents the E sound. E is the tricky spelling. Let's read some of these words again. Okay, so these are the ones we just stretched out before. We're going to read them together. Hen. Red, stem, happen, bedroom. Um, so sometimes, just going back to this slide, sometimes um, I might have to try out both sounds to see which ones make sense. So if I'm at the first one, I might say, and hen, okay, that makes sense. Then I'm gonna try it with the E sound, heen, heen. Heen is not a word that I know. Um, same with, same with um, happen. Let's do it with one of our multi-syllable words. Happen, happen, hmm, happen. So I might have to try out both sounds to see which one makes more sense. Alrighty. <clears throat> For this part, I'm going to say a sentence using this word. I want you to listen carefully and then decide how to read and say this word. Okay, ready? I went to the store and I got a lemon to put on my salad. A lemon. All right. Should I have said lemon or lemon? Hmm. I know that that one's going to be eh, eh, with a short sound lemon. All right. So this is one where I can practice lemon or lemon. What are you thinking? Lemon. To make lemonade, you must squeeze a lemon. All right, I will read sentences aloud. You're going to decide which chunking is going to make sense, okay? So I'm going to lean over and whisper to you a secret or secret. What am I gonna whisper? A secret. Alrighty, <clears throat> we're going to be packing up. I'm going to give you 10 seconds or seconds. Hmm, thinking about it, seconds or seconds? Seconds. Alrighty. Hmm. When I think of the number 12, is it even or odd or even and odd. How would I say that? Even or even? It's an even number. Alrighty. Um, at the end of most fairy tales, you will hear this. And they lived happily ever ever. Or did they live happily ever? Did they leave, live happily ever after? Or happily ever after? Ever or ever? Ever. Alrighty. Um, if I'm going to park in the city, I need to put coins into the meter or the meter? The meter or the meter? I need to put them in the meter. Alrighty. Um, hmm. What can I think of a sentence for this? 
I'm gonna skip that one. I cannot think of a sentence on the spot. Okay. I need you to count out seven circles. Or do I need you to count out seven circles? Seven or seven? Seven. The letter E is a tricky spelling. We know that it creates a tug of war. Here I have secret or secret. I'm gonna, they're tugging a war. What, what sound does it make? It's really helpful if I say those words first to kind of try it out. Okay, am I gonna be whispering a secret or a secret? That helps me decide how I'm gonna read those words. Next up, we're going to jump right into our reading for today. We're gonna be reading this story, Wall Street. <clears throat> In our previous lessons, you read the story, The Subway in our readers, uh, or I showed it on the screen and we did it on Google Classroom or Seesaw. Kim and Kurt were taking the subway into Manhattan. It's another borough in New York City, so Kim could look for a job in Manhattan. What was the name of the subway stop? What was the name of the subway stop that they took? The subway stop was called Wall Street. That's where they were getting off at was Wall Street. Today you will read about an area of New York City in Manhattan called Wall Street and the people who work there. Wall Street is the name of a subway stop and the name of an actual street. It is also used to describe an entire area of Manhattan where there are many banks. Okay, so you might hear of people that work on Wall Street. It's an area where there's a lot of jobs and banks. All right, let's look at some of the spellings we're gonna see today. We're gonna see um, different sounds for the E. Secret, even, street, fees, deal. In all of these words, I heard my E sound. All right, now we're gonna have um, some more spellings. These ones all have the er sound. Banker, whispered. Here we have um, y where it says the I sound in the word spy. Next we have OW where it says O. Borrow, own. Here are some multi-syllable words. Agent, extra. All right, let's look at this vocabulary together. When someone looks sharp, it's a way to describe that they're dressed up, they look fancy, they've gotten themselves together, they look very nice. I would call that looking sharp. Next up, jab. A jab is a punch or like a hard hit, it's a jab. Next one is a loan. If you're gonna borrow money, you're gonna ask for a loan. That means to borrow, you can borrow money, you can borrow, I might loan you my basketball to play with. Alrighty, we're gonna read to learn more about banks and bankers on Wall Street and some of the things that they do. Alrighty, I'm just gonna flip my screen. We're gonna stop here and so I can pull up our reader. We can read all about Wall Street. There we go. All right. Remember, as we're reading, I would like you to take your finger and follow along with me. You may read out loud with me, or if you'd like to listen the first time and follow along with your finger, then next time you can rewind it back and read it along with me, okay? Let's get started. Wall Street. At the Wall Street stop, a man got on the train. He had on black pants, a black jacket, a crisp white shirt, and a red necktie. He was holding a black case. He looked sharp. So if I look at my picture clue, I can see that that's kind of what looking sharp looks like. He's in a nice suit, he has a nice tie. He's very put together. Kurt jabbed Kim with his elbow. Ooh, that's another vocab word. Remember we said jab was kind of like to hit. And whispered, what do you think his job is? I don't know, said Kim. He might be a banker who has a job in a bank on Wall Street. What's a bank? A bank is a place where you can keep your cash so it is safe. The bank keeps your cash until you need it and they pay you a bit for saving your cash with them. Since not everyone needs their cash at the same time, the bank has extra cash 
that they can use to make loans to people who need cash. What is a loan? When you get a loan from a bank, the bank lets you borrow some of the cash it has and you make a deal to pay the cash back later, plus some fees that the bank adds in. Next page. Taking our finger, putting it on the right, on the first word is you. I see quotation marks, which means this is something that someone is saying. You mean you have to pay back more cash than the cash you borrow? That's right. Why not just use the cash you've got, Kurt asked. Well, if you have a lot of cash, you might not need to get a loan, but let's say you plan to open your own store. You would need a lot of cash before you even opened the store. You might not have all of this cash on your own, so you might need a loan to get started. Kurt dreamed of a store he might like to open and of a banker handing him a big bag of cash. Then he dreamed that he might even like to be a banker himself. Do bankers get paid a lot? Kurt asked. Some of them do. So why don't you get a job at a bank? Most banks won't hire you unless you have finished two or three years of college. I have just finished one year. So it's a hard job to get. Kim nodded. Ooh, okay, that's the end of our story about Wall Street. We learned a lot about banking and about loans and some of the things that a banker might do. Let's just jump right back in. Alrighty, not there. Let's try this again. Hmm. Okay, well let's think about some of the things that our banker and um, the bankers do or bankers might have learned about. Okay, question number one. Describe the man who gets on the train at the Wall Street stop. Hmm, Let's think about what he looked like. He was in a nice suit, he had a red tie, he was carrying a briefcase with all of his things. Question two, why do you think Kurt thinks the man might be a spy or a secret agent. Hmm. Sometimes when people are in a black suit, that makes me think about being a secret agent. Question number three, what does Kim think the Wall Street man's job might be? Kim thinks that he might be a banker. Question four, what do banks do with people's cash? Remember, Kim was teaching Kurt all about it. She said that they hold on to your cash and keep it safe. You might not need all your cash at one time, so they hold on to it. Why does Kim think she would not be able to get a summer job at a bank? Hmm. She was describing to Kurt that you usually need to have finished two or three years of college. She has only finished one so far. Alrighty guys, um, we're gonna do more in Seesaw. Let's just review our goals that, for today. One, can we read words with the O-W spelling? Yes, we learned that there's two different ways that the O-W can be said. O and ow, it's kind of a tug of war. I can read words with the tricky E spelling. We learned about that too, another tricky one. E can say its name E, like in me or she. Or it can say it sound eh, like in yellow or lemon. That's why it's always important to try out those words. Hmm, am I saying secret or secret? I'm gonna practice those. Lastly, I can ask and answer questions about key details in the story Wall Street. We did that as well. Alrighty, second graders, great job today. Um, I look forward to next time with lesson 12. Bye guys.